for today. Yan. We will have someone from the Youth for Mental Health Coalition. Uh, he's a medical doctor and mental health advocate. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 2012 and Doctor of Medicine in 2017 from the University of Santo Tomas. And without further ado, we welcome Dr. RJ Nagit of National, uh, the National Chairperson of the Youth for Mental Health Coalition. Hello, good morning everyone. Morning. Let us all welcome Dr. Nagit. <laughs> good morning po. Yeah, good so, morning. Um, Good morning. So today uh, we will be discussing about mental wellness. No, uh, when we say mental wellness, naman ay yan. Jan po pasok yung concept ng kaginhawaan. Kasi usually pag pinag-usapan natin yung mental health, lagi natin siyang na associate to very negative things: anxiety, depression, or even suicide. No, uh, yan yung mga usual topics that uh, that we usually coordinate sa mental health. So um, ngayon lalawakan natin yung uh, usapan about mental health para mas ma hindihan pa natin siya. And then later on, pag-uusapan natin yung mga different ways on how we can cope with the current uh, situation. So, simulan muna natin dito sa definition ng mental health. Nasabi ko nga kanina na usually na-associate siya with very negative concepts. And I think hindi yun maganda kasi una sa lahat, doon nagsisimula yung tinatawag nating stigma. Ito yung mga negative na mga pananaw ukol sa certain group of people. No? For example, sa mga taong may mental health problem, usually na-associate natin sila sa hindi sila ganun kadali katrabaho, hindi sila ganun kaproductive. No? So, yan yung mga usual na mga uh, stigma na binibigay sa kanila. Pero, if you would look at the definition of uh, the World Health Organization when they define mental health, yung una pa lang na part would actually tell us that mental health is a state of well-being. At yung definition na to, kinikilala niya na yung mga negative na nangyayari sa buhay natin, yung mga stressors kung tawagin, yung mga nakakalungkot at nakakastress na parte ng buhay natin ay normal. No? And as long as we can cope and function and continue to find meaning dun sa ginagawa natin, we can actually be considered mentally well. At dagdag pa dyan, yung last line dito, able to make a contribution to his or her community. So yung kagalingan natin, yung kaginhawaan natin, hindi lang siya dapat pansarili, pero dapat nakikita rin siya on how we relate to other people. So dyan po mapasok yung definition, yung holistic definition of mental health. Dati kasi ina-associate ko yung mental health to happiness. No? Nag-agree ba kayo doon? Mental health is happiness? Ayun, may mga napasmile na lang. <laughs> okay, Uh, usually, ganun yung pananaw ko before, no? Pero after seeing mental health in different settings, like for example, nakita ko on how mental health is uh, being done sa mga community, sa prison, for example, no? So, dun ko na-realize na, na uh, hindi ganun kadali na equate dapat ang happiness to mental health. It might be the end goal, pero it's just one part of it. Kaya ako, lagi talaga akong bumabalik dun sa definition ng World Health Organization, doon sa abilidad ng tao na lampasan kung ano man yung negative things that is happening around him or her. And because of the pandemic, marami tayong mga concerns, no? Ilan dito ay na-highlight na kanina. Pero in terms of looking at yung long-term effects ng mental health, uh, ng, ng pandemic sa ating mental health, wala pang ganong study, no? So, sinisimulan pa lang yon. Pero ito yung mga, some of the concerns that we're actually seeing now. Number one is uncertainty about the future. At totoo to, lalo na sa mga kabataan. So, marami talagang concern ngayon over uh, opening of classes. No? Hindi natin alam kung magiging back to normal ba. Kailan ba tayo mag-face to face teaching ulit? Kasi lahat ngayon halos naka-online classes. Uh, yung iba naman, mas long term yung pagtingin nila. No? Hindi nila alam anong magiging itsura ng future nila. No? So, syempre, in a way, ngayon nagre-recalibrate na tayo ng mga values and uh, goals natin in life. Pangalawa ay, syempre, nandoon yung fear na pwede tayo magkaroon ng infection. No? Totoo naman yun kasi yung virus hindi natin siya nakikita and actually yung pasyente ko kanina before I actually went here, she was telling me about yung fear niya over uh, touching objects na merong uh, virus. So yung mga ganun ba na kailangan maintindihan din natin as a possible contributor sa public anxiety. And of course, hindi rin natin maiiwasan na minsan dahil nga um, pwedeng maka-infect yung tao ng 
uh, ng virus and then pwedeng dumala yung uh, condition niya, pwedeng magkaroon tayo ng certain loss of our lives, no? Na nakikita natin yan. may mga namamatay because of COVID. And uh, yung grieving process natin hindi parehas compared to before. Dati nakakapaglamay tayo ng one week. Ngayon parang kailangan na i-cremate agad yung... Uh, Uh, yung body because uh, yun nga parang within 24 hours kailangan mawala ma- ma- dispose na siya and uh, of course nandiyan rin yung barriers in terms of accessing services so uh, syempre maraming mga kabataan ngayon yung uh, nahihiya rin na humi sa parents sila ng mga pambili para sa mga medications nandiyan rin yung uh, hindi, yung hindi na uh, open lahat yung mga psychiatric institution so concern din kung paano sila magfo-follow up sa mental health conditions nila. And in general, I think because of the pandemic that is happening right now, mataas yung emotions ng mga kabataan. Pwede maka-experience sila ng um, anger, frustration na dati hindi naman nila nararamdaman or some form of emotional distress, no? And uh, of course, nandiyan rin yung adjustments na kailangan nating maintindihan in terms of the community quarantine. So ngayon, 'di ba, parang hindi tayo nakakalabas, yung trabaho natin nag-shift uh, from uh, face to face naging work from home na o kaya yung online classes na definitely um, merong mga concerns yan no i've been talking to a lot of young employees as well as students at sinasabi nila na um, dahil nga sa nasa quarantine sila na blur na yung lines between work and rest so later on mas titig pa natin yan in the discussion and of course because of the physical distancing that we're experiencing nandiyan yung additional threats in terms of isolation at saka yung loneliness. So, malaking uh, factor yan in terms of us providing support. ba diba? Dati, pag meron kang problema, pwede kang pumunta sa bahay ng kaibigan mo tapos pag-uusapan nyo yung problema. Pero ngayon, social media na lang tayo. At uh, syempre, alam naman natin na hindi enough yung social media in terms of providing support to another person. So, ito naman yung uh, sinasabi ko kanina regarding dun sa work from home setup. And I think, applicable din ito dun sa mga nag online classes. Kasi nga, parang yung ano natin ngayon, yung workplace natin ngayon ay yung bahay na. So, nawawala na yung social cues natin between rest and work. May mga kilala ko, kakagising pa lang nila. Gusto nila mag-aral, no? Hindi pa sila, hindi pa sila the toothbrush, hindi pa sila naghihilamos. Trabaho na kagad yung uh, ginagawa nila. And of course, uh, that can also lead us to burn out, lalo na kung hindi natin na-control yung mga uh, bagay na nag-pace sa atin dati. So, dati meron tayong mga, uh, for example, one hour na break na scheduled. No? So, ngayon, parang I've been hearing a lot of people are actually taking shorter breaks. At yung iba sa atin, hindi na naging weekend. Kahit weekend, nagtatrabaho pa. Kasi, parang akala nila, kailangan nila maging productive. Kailangan nila ipakita sa boss yung, yung pagiging productive nila by working even on weekends. So, yung mga ganyan, kailangan nating i-address para at least hindi rin tayo nababurn out later on. Um, napaka-limited ng mga studies natin when it comes to mental health uh, at, at yung pandemic na to. Pero this is one study that was done in China in 2020 by Yang and Ma. And they actually studied factors that protect or worsen the emotional well-being of a person in a time of pandemic. So nakita nila yung mga possible detrimental factors is number one, yung pagkakaroon ng high risk of contracting the disease. At saka kung mataas yung risk mo of being Um, uh, infected with a severe form of uh, this problem. So, for example, pag uh, ano ka, mata- uh, nasa advanced age group ka, 65 years old or above, or meron kang ibang mga sakit, then probably hindi siya masyadong helpful sa, hindi siya masyadong correlated to positive mental health. Pero dito, kung makikita niyo sa baba, na yung perception of knowledge, so kahit perception lang, no, inisip mo lang na alam mo yung mga bagay about COVID, is actually helpful in terms of our emotional well-being. So, importante, when we actually cascade our mental health programs, kasama dyan dapat yung right information about COVID, how it's uh, transmitted, ano yung mga symptoms, para at least that can also allay some form of anxiety. So, this is called the biopsychosocial model of health. No? Sinasabi dito na yung mental health natin is a combination of different factors. So, you have the biological factors. Ito yung mga certain genes natin. Yung pagkunari, yung nanay or tatay mo or yung lola or lola mo, meron siyang mental health problem. Most likely, yung bata, posible magkaroon rin ng some form of mental health concern. Or at least, vulnerable siya. No? Uh, nandiyan rin yung chemicals sa utak natin na pag sobra sila or kulang sila, they might lead to behavioral manifestations. And uh, right now, the current research on mental health looks at 
the role of micronutrient deficiencies. So, so ito yung sa commercial, yung micronutrient deficiency, laban na natin to kasi it might actually uh, make you vulnerable in some uh, mental health problems, specifically yung mga mood disorders kung tawagin. And uh, of course, nandiyan yung psychological factors, paano mo tinitignan yung sarili mo, how you cope with the normal stresses of life, and of course, yung social factors. No? So ito yung um, work environment, yung uh, family dynamics, and even yung school environment. No? Malaking factor yan in terms of our mental well-being. And of course, yung COVID pandemic is actually also part of the social factors. And uh, even though that meron tayong certain vulnerabilities caused by biological and even psychological factors, usually yung nagiging trigger ng mga mental health problems ay mga social uh, problems in nature. No? So, yan yung talagang kailangan nating pagtuunan ng pansin kasi usually pag sinabi natin biological, pwede tayong magbigay ng gamot to correct the certain imbalances. Pag psychological, pwede tayong magbigay ng therapy. Pero pag social na yung pinag-usapan, kailangan natin correct yung mga imbalances on how we live our lives. So, yan yung mga um, mas external na factors that we also need to address in terms of mental health. And of course, in terms of mapping out who is vulnerable, lahat pwede magkaroon ng mental health problems. No? Um, kahit kami as mental health uh, professionals or advocates, nagkakaroon rin ng moments na hindi kami okay. No? And uh, syempre, yung mga karaniwang tao na wala talaga background on mental health, syempre, posible rin na magkaroon sila ng gantong kinds of concerns. But take note, kahit na lahat tayo pwede magkaroon ng gantong concern, mayroong iba sa atin na mas mataas yung risk. No? For example, um, naging, uh, nagkaroon ka ng uh, issue of sexual assault before. So probably, mas mataas yung chance mo na magkaroon ka ng trauma compared to other people. So what I would like to emphasize here is that not everyone lands the same in terms of mental health and in terms of uh, mapping out the different interventions that we will do posibleng kailangan yung ibang mga tao might need more support compared to others. So there was this uh, webinar uh, hosted by the Harvard Chan School of Public Health and they were talking about emotion management. At uh, yung first thing na sinasabi nila doon is that we have to accept that all of us are affected in some way by this pandemic. No? So meron tayo talagang feelings of anger, frustration, loneliness, so, yan ay mga expected emotions. No? So, kailangan siguro natin kilalanin na when we talk about mental health, it's actually composed of positive as well as negative emotions. And both of them are valid at this point in time. Kasi minsan, yung ginagawa natin, pag negative yung emotions, hindi natin sila pinag-uusapan. No? Uh, parang pinipilit natin maging okay, pinipilit natin maging productive, pero hindi natin kinikilala yung mga negative emotions. Kasi dito, yung first step na sabi nila in terms of emotion management is that we have to assess yung mga emotions ba na experience natin na mamatch ba nito yung stressor na kinakaharap natin. Kasi di ba gusto natin na yung reaction natin to a certain stimulus ay ang kop lang. No? Hindi pwedeng um, over yung reaction natin. Like for example, if we're having um, anxiety disorders, for example, no? Um, hindi ka faced with a very stressful stimuli, pero yung reaction ng katawan mo ay very aggressive. No? Ibig sabihin, parang um, lalabas ka lang ng bahay, for example, kinakabahan ka na. No? Tumitubok na sobrang, sobrang bilis ng tibok ng puso mo, sobrang bilis ng paghinga mo. So, pag ganung mga situation, hindi nagmamatch yung emotion natin to the intensity of the stimulus that we have. So, pag ganun, syempre, pag, uh, baka ano na yun, diagnosable mental health condition na and they might need additional support. Pero kung nagmamatch naman yung emotions at saka yung intensity ng stressor mo, then the best way to manage that emotion is to experience that emotion. So again, babalik tayo doon sa hindi pag-suppress ng ating emotions. Kasi if you would look at this slide, yung first curve dito, ayan. So uh, alam ko familiar kayo sa mga flattening the curve right now, di ba? Pero dito ibang curve ito. Ito ay tinatawag nating emotional curve. So as you can see, pag um, anxiety level, Pag kunwari, in-experience mo siya early on, later on, mag-fade na siya. Pero pag kunwari, sinupress mo yung emotion mo, ninub mo siya, or in-avoid mo siya altogether, pwedeng mag-sustain yung anxiety mo. No? So again, the best way to manage our emotions is to express them, is to experience them. At lagi natatanong sa atin, no? parang ano ba yung difference between a normal reaction and a mental health disorder na. So, ito yung mga 5Ds that can actually 
um, give you a clue na posibleng hindi na to normal reaction as a person. No? So, it might already be a diagnosable mental health condition. Na. So, take uh, take note, hindi ito, diagnose, uh, hindi ito ano, uh, diagnostic talk. Ha? So, we're just here to actually tell you ano yung mga things na babantayan para at least uh, malaman natin kung kailangan na, na ng mga friends natin or even family members natin ng additional support. So, number one is dysfunction. So when we say dysfunction, ito yung naapektuhan na yung work mo, ito yung naapektuhan na yung school mo. At minsan ito na yung parang naapektuhan na rin yung relationships mo at yung abilidad mo para alagaan yung sarili mo. So pag ganun na papay ano na yung sarili mo, naapektuhan na yung work mo, then probably it's already a mental health problem. Pangalawa is yung tinatawag nating deviance. So yung behavior ba na ginagawa ko ay something na normal uh, reaction ng isang tao. So, for example, yun nga, balik tayo din sa example ko na lalabas ka ng bahay. So, pag yung normal na tao ba, pag lalabas siya ng bahay, kakabahan siya, uh, bibilis yung tibok ng puso niya. Hindi naman, di ba? So, uh, pag ganun, that might actually constitute some form of deviance dun sa normal behavior ng kariniwang tao. And the third is what we call distress. So, yung dysfunction ba na experience mo at saka yung deviance in terms of the behavior that you do, nagko-cause ba siya ng negative feelings sa iyo? Kasi normally pag dysfunctional ka na or uh, hindi mo nagagawa yung mga dapat mong gawin, merong sense of frustration on your part, 'di ba? So magiging negative rin yung feelings mo. So if it causes distress, then uh, probably uh, ano siya, no? It's uh, normal, no? Kasi kung negative na yung nangyari sa iyo, it should cause you distress. Pero kung hindi siya nag-cause ng distress, parang ano, wala, wala akong pake, parang ganun, then it might already be a mental health concern. And of course, nandiyan yung danger, no? So yung fourth D natin. When you say danger, ito yung danger to other people, like nananakit yung person, or danger sa sarili. So pag uh, nag-self-harm ka na or even considering some form of uh, suicide, then dun po mapasok yung danger. And uh, the last D is what we call duration. So if you would look at yung um, tool na ginagamit namin to diagnose people with mental health problems, it would usually have some form of time criteria or time element. So usually pag mas patagal yung symptom, then most likely hindi na siya normal reaction. So now we proceed with the different wellness tips in the time of COVID. So pag sinabi nating mental wellness tips, Dalawa lang yung main characteristics niya. Number one, we have it actually tells us to increase our capacity to cope by increasing our resilience. Pangalawa ay pinabawasan natin yung negative stressors that we experience. So dalawa yan ha. Number one, increasing capacity to cope. Pangalawa ay decreasing exposure to negative stimuli or yung mga stressors natin. So dito po ang pasok yan, no? So usually yung mga triggers na nakakausap, uh, na naririnig ko from the people I talk to ngayon ay nanggagaling sa media. So when we say media, this is uh, uh, this includes actually yung traditional as well as social media. And minsan ngayon, di ba, parang tingin tayo ng tingin sa mga phones natin at sobrang dami ng mga negative news that are uh, being shared. no? And sometimes, pag nagsabay-sabay itong mga ito, they can actually trigger you uh, to become overwhelmed. Kasi yun nga, parang nagsasabay-sabay sila tapos puro negative pa. So, one way to manage that is to increase our control over these um, uh, gadgets. no So, syempre, pwede natin i-limit yung mga notifications that we do or that we uh, that we have. So, for example, di ba, sa, sa mga phone natin, pwede natin i-limit yung mga nagpa-pop up sa screen natin para at least we can also manage yung mga information that we receive. Um, possibly helpful then if we can also regulate yung time that we check social media. So, kesa dun sa buong araw ka, nagtitingin sa phone mo, nagsuscroll ka, prob probably, if it's already affecting your mental health, pwede natin i-consider na i-schedule siya na every two hours lang tayo mag-check. No? So, yung mga ganun na activities, that actually increase our agency over controlling yung mga gantong um, uh, tools that we have. And of course, uh, right now, I think it's also important to make sure that the information that we share come from credible sources. Kasi nga, parang uh, right now, maraming mga group chat sa mga pamilya ninyo, di ba? Meron kayong mga group chat. Tapos yung mga tita or tita ninyo, nagsisend sila ng mga, um, ng mga unverified news sometimes. Um, actually, sa family group chat namin, naka-experience rin ako ng ganito. Tapos parang yung misconception was, um, 
sabi nila nagte-test raw ng microchip ngayon <laughs> yung US para um, yun yung maging vaccine tapos parang ginagamit raw yung vaccine tinatry siya sa papaya tapos yung papaya raw may virus so wag daw kakain ng papaya so yung mga ganun ba na parang uh, misinformation they tend to increase actually yung tinatawag nating public anxiety so Napaka-importante that we get information from credible sources. So for me, I try to listen to, uh, for example, WHO or uh, the DOH or uh, try to also check uh, yung mga uh, different uh, bulletins na linalabas ng mga different government agencies. And then uh, the idea there is to also balance yung mga negative as well as positive news. Kasi syempre, pag puro negative, it might actually also affect our mental well-being already. It's also important to maintain daily routines. So, uh, yung ha- pagkakaroon ng routines can actually help us cope with a very stressful situation. So, actually, yung mga ganito, parang uh, ginagawa ko siya na meron talaga akong routines in a day to simulate yung mga activities na ginagawa ko prior to the pandemic. So, bago ako mag-start ng araw ko, I make sure na nakapag-breakfast ako, na nakaligo ako before doing work. Kasi nag, uh, nag-play rin yan ng um, role in terms of pacing our day uh, na hindi tayo nabuburn out trend later on. And I know uh, sometimes routines might be boring. That's why it might be helpful if you can also inject some new activities uh, sa routines natin. So I know ngayon marami talagang mga gumagawa ng mga iba't ibang mga activities. Uh, may mga kilala ko na nag-gardening na bigla. May mga kakilala ko na nag nagagaganchilyo na. So, sobrang random. Pero it's actually interesting kung paano nila uh, ginagawa yung mga gantong activities at paano nila pinapasok sa routines nila. Um, it's also important that we actually maintain also a sense of gratitude. So, when we say uh, gratitude, hindi naman ibig sabihin nito na inaalis natin yung mga negative things that are happening around us. So, what I'm just trying to say here is that we have to sometimes look at also the positive things at hindi natin uh, ipag ipag walang bahala ito because even if negative yung mga nangyayari ngayon around us meron pa ring mga good things that are happening so probably minsan kailangan natin maging uh, deliberate in terms of the ways on how we express gratitude so i know of some people na sinusulat sila uh, sa isang notebook and that's what they call gratitude journal merong ako mga kilala na meron silang parang lalagyan tapos parang doon naglalagay sila sa post it ng mga things that they're thankful for tapos sila lagay doon sa kanta yon or um yung sa mga ano naman sa mga nanay sa community na kausap ko what they do is that they uh, form a group chat tapos yung mga positive things na nangyari pina-post nila doon sa group chat so nakakatuwa kasi parang nagpo-post sila doon ng mga breakfast nila yung mga anak nila mga nakakatuwa uh, na makikita pa rin natin na positive things are still happening around us or for me For example, ako, ginagawa ko, since uh, hindi ako masyadong masulat as a person, I, I, what I usually do is that when I wake up, ginagawa kong ritual na I try to mention three things that I'm thankful for in a day. So, very simple lang siya. And it can actually also remind you to look at the positive things. And uh, of course, in the time of uh, pandemic, naka, ano tayo, no? naka physical isolation tayo. That's why it's important to still maintain some form of social connection with other people. So, alam ko, maraming mga activities na yung nag-shift online. So, ngayon, di ba, nag-webinar tayo, online siya. Uh, pero yung ibang mga tao, mas creative yung paggamit nila sa mga gantong platforms. I know of some people who use Zoom para mag-Zumba. So, <laughs> nagkakaroon sila ng Zumba session. Uh, tapos nagkakaroon rin uh, ako ng mga friends na uh, nagluluto sila na sabay-sabay. Tapos parang meron akong kilala na nagmukbang uh, using Zoom. So nakakatuwa on how they actually utilize it. And uh, that can also min- uh, may help maintain yung social connection. Pero take note lang dito because I've also been reading a lot about yung uh, mga lengthy Zoom meetings and how they impact mental health. At sabi nila na minsan pag sobrang tagal na ng meeting, it can actually cause some form of stress. So meron tayong tinatawag na parang technology fatigue, no? Uh, na kailangan rin natin i-address. That's why one of the recommendations na uh, linalabas and you can also read this from Harvard uh, Business School. Pero sa recommendation to make sure na yung mga interactions natin online are short but at the same time regular. No? So kunarin may kay circle of friends. So, magte-text kayo, oh, kumusta ka na? Ganyan. Tapos parang we can just limit the conversation to 5 minutes or 10 minutes maximum. 
Tapos, uh, that can already be helpful in terms of making sure na nandoon yung mga connection natin. Kasi right now, di ba, pag nag-online tayo, laging merong objective. No? Nawawala na yung mga dati nating mga kwentuhan na very light lang. So probably, yun yung kailangan natin uh, magawa doon sa mga short but regular interactions natin with other people. So yun, so yun yung isa sa mga recommendations na. And uh, isa pa pala, in terms of uh, uh, connecting online, probably it, uh, kung mangungumusta ka ng ibang tao, um, don't expect na magre-reply sila kaagad. Because we also need to understand na other people might also be overwhelmed in terms of social media. At may mga tao talaga na nag-dis- nag-disconnect sometimes. So, um, mag-ano ka lang, mag-send ka lang, tapos para to convey na gusto mong uh, mag-reach out sa kanila, pero wag tayo mag-expect na babalik ka agad. Or magre-reply sila ka agad. So, this slide naman tells us about the different psychosocial stressors. So, syempre, kinikilala natin na yung mga stressors na kinakaharap natin ngayon, hindi lang sila emotional in nature. Some of them are actually concerning yung mga basic necessities natin. So, like for example, food, uh, job security, di ba? Maraming mga nalilay off ngayon. So, yung mga ganun ba na kailangan rin natin um, equally address. Like, uh, for example, we can Uh, we can actually volunteer in doing some errands. Kung kunwari, meron kayong kakilala na elderly na kapitbahay ninyo, then probably you can also volunteer para bumi- bumili sa kanila ng food para mabawasan yung possible exposure nila to COVID-19 also. So, what I want to highlight lang dito is that don't underestimate the value of practical help. Kasi usually, pag sinabi natin mental health support, laging emotional, psychological yung response. Pero, Uh, in a way, uh, addressing the basic needs and also taking care of yourself and securing uh, the, your basic needs are actually mental health interventions by themselves. So, kailangan nating uh, makita na complementary itong mga efforts na ito. So, one way also of uh, looking at a uh, certain stressor is to look at how cognitive behavioral therapy approaches it. No? So, sa cognitive behavioral therapy kasi, Uh, they would actually tell you that the distress that we experience are actually a result of the negative thoughts that we have in our brain. And that the way to address them is baguhin natin yung uh, pagtingin natin sa mga stressors na ito. So, sa baba, makita niyo yung mga different approaches. So, if you can control the stressor that you're facing, then you go for action-oriented approaches. Ibig sabihin, pag kaya mong solusyonan yung problema mo, then you address it, no? Uh, for example, the problem is within the family na hindi mo makommunicate yung needs mo or sila yung nagiging trigger sa'yo. Probably, the best way to go about it is to uh, keep an open uh, line of communication, express kung ano yung impact sa'yo ng mga actions nila in the family. So, again, mas nagiging proactive tayo dito sa action-oriented approaches. So, ano naman, sa second part, if you cannot control it but you can control your thoughts or reactions to it, Then this is the time we go for emotion-oriented approaches. So dito yung parang binabago natin how we think about certain things. Of course, ano no, parang uh, helpful lang ito in terms of managing our mental health. Pero syempre, ayo naman nating i-deny yung mga real uh, situation na nangyayari ngayon. So for example, um, community quarantine. No? So merong two ways of looking at the community quarantine. Pwede, siyang, pwede mo siyang tignan in a way na very positive. Uh, like uh, you can uh, look at the quarantine as a way of deepening your your relationships with other people sa sa bahay ninyo you can also look at it as a form of rest pero at the same time you can also look at it as a way na hindi ka makalabas na disconnected ka from your friends so dito if we take up yung thought na positive then probably yung behavior natin and yung feelings natin towards it might also change no kasi nakikita natin siya as a welcome disruptor rather than a stressor in itself. And uh, lastly, if hindi natin makontrol at wala talaga tayong magawa about it, then wala tayong choice. Accept na lang natin. So later on, I'll, I will be sharing with you some techniques in terms of doing acceptance-oriented approaches. Okay, so the, ne- the next question that we need to ask is this question, no? Is this um, reaction or uh, uh, thought helpful or harmful to me? Because sometimes, yung mga iniisip natin tend to self-sabotage us, di ba? So, 
uh, minsan parang uh, kunare uh, gusto mo mag-open up sa parents mo uh, about a uh, possible stressor minsan parang inaasum na natin na hindi sila hindi maging okay yung reaction nila dito so pag ganon um, it might actually be harmful for us if we're going to think about it that way so again I cannot overemphasize the importance of looking at the possible uh, consequence of a certain action and the possible alternatives. Because hindi naman laging negative yung situation na possibly nangyari. And of course, nandiyan rin yung concept that I want to highlight called self-compassion. Kasi minsan yung mga uh, thoughts natin, minsan mas critical tayo sa sabihin natin compared to other people. Mas mataas yung standards na sinisit natin for ourselves. So, Probably in terms of uh, looking at how you cope with a certain stress or probably or how you react to a certain stress or pro- pro- probably kailangan natin tignan is this something na i-expect ko sa ibang tao is it something na expect ko na gawin sa ibang tao so probably if hindi then we have we need to ask ourselves bakit ko to sinasabi sa sarili ko bakit ko hinuhold yung sarili ko to a certain standard and i think this is especially Uh, relevant sa mga kabataan ngayon because I, I've been talking to a lot of young people at sobrang taas sometimes ng mga standards na sineset nila for themselves which can sometimes lead to some form of frustration on their part also lalo na kung hindi nila namimit yun. and this is further amplified by the expectation set by parents by uh, their peers and even social media na nag-idealize nung uh, pinaka-ideal form of uh, youth no? na we actually encounter now Okay. So, in terms of uh, doing self-care practices, what we need to understand is that uh, these self-care practices are deliberately performed action sequences. Ibig sabihin, hindi mangyayari yung self-care unless you actually do something about it. Kasi, di ba, parang uh, minsan pag na-face tayo with certain stressors, yung mga basic things to take care of ourselves like uh, sleeping, eating nutritious food, Misa na babaliwala natin sila, di ba? Especially sa mga young professionals. For example, ang daming trabaho, hindi nakakapag-lunch. O kaya, huwibili na lang ng mga fast food. So, in terms of doing self-care, it has to be deliberate so that wellness will happen. And probably, this is also the time that we actually map out ano yung mga needs mo as an individual, tapos you map out ano yung mga things that we should be doing, and then later on, implementing them. No? Kasi hindi naman pwedeng nasa-stuck tayo din sa planning part on how we do self-care. So, ako, ako personally, yung ginagawa ko para lang uh, makondition to yung utak ko and to form that habit, what I do is that I try to put it in my calendar. No? So, nalagi ko siya sa calendar ko para may reminder din na mag-exercise ka na, kumain ka na ng maayos para at least na hindi natin sila nakakalibutan at uh, naisasabutan din. Okay, so this is quite technical, pero sinasabi lang nito na uh, meron tayong mga activities that we do for daily self-care na parang investment siya over our long-term mental health. Pero meron din tayong uh, mga tinatawag na emergency self-care strategies just in case na meron tayong uh, mga situations where we're actually faced with a very overwhelming stressor. Ayan, so nakita niyo naman dito sa uh, slide na to are the different means of taking care of yourself. And uh, most of them are very um, simple. No? Like for example, eating regular meals, having daily routines, um, getting uh, good sleep hygiene. So yung maganda, very simple siya, pero at the same time, ang hirap niyang gawin, lalo na kung face ka with different stressors. So the idea here is that when we're faced with an overwhelming stressor, dapat taasan rin natin actually yung self-care practices that we do. And uh, wag nating hintayin na magkaroon na tayo ng mental health problem bago pa natin gawin yung mga self-care practices na ito. And uh, of course, I, I'd also like to emphasize that the way we cope is very individualized. No? So kung ano yung uh, intervention that might work for one person, might not necessarily work for another person. Siyempre, hindi mo naman pwedeng i-force na mag-exercise yung tao na hindi naman talaga nag-exercise kaagad. Pero, in terms of uh, wanting to uh, explore exercise as a way of coping, probably it would help if you integrate it slowly sa activities mo. So, ako nung nagsisimula pa lang yung quarantine, nagkaroon ako ng problems in terms of sleeping. So, what I did is that I slowly integrated exercise. So, nag start ako with uh, 20 push-ups in a day. Tapos later on, nag-progress siya to now, regular na akong nag-exercise. 
Ayan. And of course, in terms of looking at the different coping strategies, kailangan din natin tignan ano yung mga strategies that worked for us before. So, for example, uh, dati sa classroom, bumagsak ka sa classroom, ano yung ginawa mo about uh, that certain situation? And then, right now, since nasa pandemic tayo, pwede ko bang i-apply yung uh, coping mechanism na ginawa ko dati nung bumagsak ako sa classroom to online classes now, no? as a way of coping. So, yung mga ganun, kailangan natin i-review and then tignan natin ano yung mga barriers in terms of us doing self-care. So, hindi pa tayo nakapag-self-care kasi um, wala tayong gamit pang gym, for example. Pero definitely, maraming mga modifications that can be done. And uh, of course, we have to replace the negative coping strategies that we actually do. So, syempre, yung mga negative coping strategies, nandiyan yung drinking alcohol, um, self-harming, or even um, smoking. Those are negative coping strategies na ayaw natin. Gusto natin mapalitan sila with positive practices. And uh, meron rin tayo tinatawag na psychological self-defense. This is not a scientific term, pero sinasabi lang dito na when we're faced with a very overwhelming stressor or sobrang taas ng anxiety mo, then probably it might be helpful if you reduce the stimulus that you're exposed to. So probably you can physically distance yourself dun sa stressor mo or you can uh, probably uh, dim yung uh, lights and uh, decrease yung level of noise. Kasi minsan pag uh, yun nga, sobrang taas ng stimuli, probably minsan nakaka-overwhelm siya, di ba? So, yun yung mga gusto natin mangyari. Okay. It might also be helpful if we also take a step back. So, uh, when you say stepping back, ito yung taking a breathing time, no? So, uh, taking a moment to breathe, no? So, sabi nila, di ba? Pag galit ka, magbilang ka muna ng 10 seconds before you actually say something. And actually also, that's actually also applicable in terms of mental health. And uh, when we're faced with, for example, anxiety, um, napaka maganda rin na practice yung tinatawag nating grounding. So when you say grounding, ito yung parang re-reorient mo yung sarili mo to the present moment. Kasi usually when we talk about anxiety, these are actually concerns doon sa future, no? So mga perceived or real threats sa ating well-being. So for example, one one way na pwede nating uh, magawa diyan is that if sobrang uh, directed towards the future yung anxiety mo, then you have to reorient yourself back to the present moment. So, paano ba natin gagawin yan? Probably, we can employ yung five senses natin. So, you can actually mention five things that you see, five things that you hear, five things that you smell. So, yung mga ganun ba na parang makita mo kung ano yung mga surroundings mo para at least that can reorient you to the present moment. And then of course, these are just some of the techniques that you can actually do. Nandiyan yung tinatawag nating deep breathing exercises, which is also very, very, ano, very simple, very cost-effective. Um, ano siya, no? Hinga ka lang, no? When you, pero, compared dun sa normal na paghinga natin, probably, ito ay mas mabagal. At mas importante dito yung pag-hold ng breath mo rather than the inhale and exhale phase. So when you say deep breathing, inhale ka for 4 seconds usually. And then hold it in for one to two seconds, and then exhale slowly afterwards. So sa sa Twitter o kaya sa may may mga nakita ko mga GIF eh, na you can actually uh, practice yung deep breathing exercises by watching yung ano yung mga certain uh, GIFs na ito. So you can look for them sa sa Twitter. Pero usually four seconds na inhale, tapos uh, hold na one to two seconds, and then exhale slowly afterwards. And then, nandiyan din yung tinatawag nating progressive muscle relaxation. So, medyo nakakatakot lang yung uh, term niya. Pero sobrang simple lang niya. So, sinasabi lang nito that you have to select a certain muscle group and then you can uh, alternate flexing and tensing it. Uh, flexing and then relaxing it afterwards. So, for example, uh, you can select, for example, your biceps. No? So, pwede mo select yung biceps mo and then you flex it. Flex it for 4 seconds. Ayan, min Nanginginig pa minsan yan, and then relax slowly afterwards. So, that's one way of uh, releasing yung tension that we experience sa body natin. Kasi di ba, pag nagkakaroon tayo ng anxiety, sometimes nanginigas yung mga katawan natin or hindi tayo masyado makagalaw, then probably we need to learn how to relax uh, later on. And of course, yung mindfulness meditation, maraming mga clips sa YouTube, usually mga 10 minutes sa mindfulness meditation that you can actually listen to. And they're actually very helpful. Na-try ko na ito. Uh, pero, syempre, kailangan lang nito ng konting concentration as well as sometimes 
silence dun sa area para makapag-concentrate ka sa mindfulness. Pero uh, ito yung isa sa mga evidence-based, mataas yung evidence niya in terms of reducing stress. And uh, the idea here, yung mga tatlong uh, techniques that I shared with you, is that the more you use them, the more effective they get in terms of uh, your mental well-being. So probably, you can already start talking about how to include them sa mga routines that we actually uh, have. No? So for example, uh, after one to two hours of work, you can do some form of deep breathing exercises. And then, uh, probably sa hapon, bago ka matulog, or uh, sa gabi, bago ka matulog, you can do progressive muscle relaxation to release yung mga, ano mo, uh, yung mga tension that you actually experience. Yung mindfulness meditation, actually helpful rin siya in terms of improving sleep. So sa mga nahihirap ang matulog, this is actually one way of uh, uh, managing sleep. Pero on your next slide, you can actually see some other techniques in terms of um, uh, maximizing yung uh, tulog natin. So uh, I know some of you have already uh, have had changes doon sa sleeping patterns natin. So in terms of uh, limiting yung naps natin, probably it's best to limit them to 30 minutes. Kasi pag tumagal yan, lalo na pag kunwari hapon na, tapos natulog ka ng 3 hours sa hapon, probably that can definitely affect yung sleeping pattern mo at night. Uh, we also need to avoid stimulants such as uh, those containing caffeine and nicotine. So, ito yung mga coffee, tea, yung mga uh, carbonated beverages like Coke, 7-Up, ay merong caffeine content. And sometimes, chocolate also has some form of caffeine. Uh, nicotine is also not advised. Ito yung nakukuha natin from cigarette smoking. No? And of course, exercise to promote uh, quality sleep and try to avoid food that can be disruptive at night. Ito yung mga fatty or even spicy food kasi mahirap yung digest yung mga ito. And for the elderly, especially kung may mga lolo or lola kayo, probably one to two hours bago matulog, iwasan natin uminom ng maraming tubig kasi that can trigger yung paghihi nila later on. Pwede maka-disturb sa sleep pattern nila. Uh, we also need to uh, ensure adequate exposure to natural light. So, alam ko na sa bahay tayo lahat ngayon. Pero if you can expose yourself to sunlight, helpful rin yan. Kasi yung sunlight also regulates the production of melatonin, which is responsible for our sleep wake cycle. So, maganda na in expose natin yung sarili natin sa sunlight. Um, of course, nandiyan, one to two hours before we sleep, probably we need to make sure that the uh, activities that we're doing are relaxing already, tapos uh, hindi na masyadong maingay sa bahay. So, as much as possible, pag nasa kama ka na, wala ka nang ibang gagawin. No? Hindi ka na nag-text, hindi ka na nag-YouTube. Kasi di ba pag nag-YouTube ka, parang forever ka na nandun hanggang hindi mo ma-realize 2 a.m. na pala, nag-YouTube ka pala. So, mga ganun ba? So, yun nga, possibly we might also need to limit yung paggamit natin ng phones. So, I know of an, uh, a person na ginagawa niya, iniiwan sa CR or iniiwan sa kitchen yung, ano niya, yung phone niya para hindi siya na, na tumingin. And actually, yung pagtingin mo sa phone mo, like for example, nakatingin niya ka, yung may, may, may ilaw yan, may blue light, no? It can, it can, and it can also affect yung sleeping pattern mo. So, of course, uh, this slide tells us about diet and uh, mental health. No? So, dito parang sinasabi lang niya na uh, yung uh, diet natin is actually very important and uh, we actually prefer yung pagkakaroon ng western-based diets because ah, we actually avoid pala yung western-based diets because usually ito yung merong mataas uh, ng content ng fat as well as unprocessed uh, sugar. So, hindi siya masyadong compatible in terms of mental health. Uh, nandiyan din yung pag-reduce ng intake ng caffeine, lalo na kung meron kang anxiety, at saka yung mga processed food. And uh, right now, they're actually looking at the role of omega-3 as a supplement for depression. Pero again, it's still undergoing studies. Ayan. Of course, uh, this slide naman, i just like to emphasize the importance of community care. Because usually, when we talk about mental health, we usually talk about it in a very personal and individualized manner. Pero napaka-importante na maintindihan natin na yung mental well-being ng isang tao ay dumidepende rin dun sa wellness ng community niya. And sometimes yung uh, community is also dependent on the individual actions of uh, a person. So probably alongside providing the usual uh, forms of support and uh, yung emotional, psychiatric, or even psychological support, kailangan din natin pag-usapan yung mga 
structural changes na kailangan natin baguhin at saka yung mga social rearrangements that needs to be done. So for example, uh, the problem is uh, regarding work, for example. No, syempre pag uh, kunare sobrang tagal ng uh, work, work hours mo o kaya hindi okay yung um, yung tra- yung conditions sa trabaho mo, then kahit anong daming ibigay mong therapy kahit gaano karaming medications yung ibigay mo hindi siya magwo-work kasi nga the trigger is actually social in nature that's why kanina lagi ko na emphasize yung importance of addressing the social factors alongside addressing the biological and psychological imbalances that we face so these are just some of the uh, resources that you can actually uh, go to so you have the National Center for Mental Health is a hotline it's a 24 hour Seven day a week suicide prevention hotline, and you can also call this number just in case you want to map out kung ano yung mga services that are available in your area. The Psychological Association of the Philippines also compiled the list of free services that na are uh, some form of psychological support. So you can visit the lit the, the link at uh, bit.ly mh services ph. So pag click niyan, dadalhin kayo dun sa Psychological Association of the Philippines compiled list. And lastly, I'd like to emphasize on this point. Now, even if we're in a state of physical distancing, this shouldn't mean or this should not equate to social isolation. So, kahit na nakseparate tayo from each other, probably this is the best time to actually review the relationships on how we can actually deepen them and to help and also talk about paano natin ma harness the role of the community in terms of managing our mental health. So, uh, I think this is the last slide. And if there are questions, you can always message me sa mga Twitter handles namin and an email. And uh, I can also take in questions later on. Uh, for our first question, let's call on Ate Tim. Hello po. So, ako po si Kishin Sandoval. So, ate Tim po. Um, question ko lang po sana. Um, kasi, uh, dahil po may mga close ano ako, acquaintances or I knew a lot of uh, some people na they're experiencing this kind of situation. Kasi, um, I have this friend na friend niya. So, close ko rin yun, na he has a problem in coping up his mental health problem. Kasi, Um, sa bahay nila kasama niya yung parents niya so yung parents niya um, hindi naniniwala na may problema siya sa mental health so aside from the from these tips and advices na binigay niyo po sa amin um, ngayon tema po sa mental health Um, knowing na yung parents po nila ay hindi naniniwala na meron po silang problema sa uh, mental health din lang po. Yeah, uh, isa yan sa actually sa mga very common concerns that we actually experience. Sa luna when a young person tries to explain sa mas matanda sa kanya, uh, siguro the first thing that we need to understand is that yung mga nanay natin or yung mga lolo or lola natin, hindi sila nagkaroon ng chance To actually learn about it, no. Uh, if you would look at it, last uh, two to three years lang, umusbong yung uh, conversation about mental health sa Pilipinas. So, yung mga thoughts nila on how they react to it are actually products nung uh, mis- di ma misinformation, pero the lack of uh, exposure sa mga gantong mga concerns. So, hindi natin sila pwedeng iyak fault na hindi enough yung or hindi nakakatulong yung responses nila sometimes. Or sometimes, meron silang mga thoughts na stigmatizing or even discriminating. So, I, I don't think fault nila yun. No? Um, kasi nga parang, yun nga, hindi pa nagkaroon ng ganong conversation. But, for us, I think it's uh, really a matter of us really um, opening up yung conversation sa kanila at il- ilapit yung issue. Kasi, yun nga, parang ako, lagi ako naniniwala na the way to convince people, hindi lang siya through their brains eh. Sometimes it's through the narratives and the stories. So somehow we have to humanize the conversation on mental health. At ganun naman yung ginagawa natin. Yun yung core ng mental health. Yung pagkilala na uh, tayo ay tao na naka-experience ng iba't ibang mga emotions. At kailangan natin uh, bigyan ng importansya ito. So probably uh, in terms of educating them, nandiyan naman yung traditional way of uh, sending them yung mga information. 
uh, yung ma- pero I, I think yung mas importante dyan is ilapit sila sa mga taong nagkaroon na or nag-triumph na dun sa condition na ito. So maraming mga people that are willing to speak out, maraming gusto mag-forward ng kanilang narratives because it actually uh, encourages uh, uh, situation na nag-open up yung mga tao sa kanilang mga concerns. And uh, hopefully, mas maigi yun kasi it actually educates the heart rather than the Thank you po. Uh, next question po natin, Kuya Sean. Yeah, great morning po, Doc. Uh, my name is Sean po. So, ang question ko po is, um, how would you help a person who is struggling mentally um, if siya mismo, uh, hindi po siya willing magpatulong? Uh, paano po yung um, strategies or yung approach po with that? Thank you po. Oo. Um, Na-encounter ko din yan several times. And uh, probably we need to understand na minsan, uh, yun nga, parang may mga tao talagang iba-iba yung readiness nila in terms of opening up and in terms of seeking support. And probably that's also part of the condition itself. No? Kasi, for example, if you have depression, possibly na uh, negative yung view mo on certain interventions and certain people. At meron kang sometimes a sense of hopelessness, di ba? Kaya hindi ka masyadong nag, ano, nag-reach out. Pero at the same time, I also believe dun sa konsepto ng patient autonomy na dapat sila yung nag-decide kung kailan sila mag-seek ng support. So kung ayaw nila mag, uh, magbigay ng ano, ayaw pa nila mag-open up, ayaw pa nila mag-seek ng services, then we have to respect that. Kasi ayaw rin naman natin na pilitin sila kasi sometimes kung pinilit natin sila, um, una sa lahat, hindi mag effective yung treatment kasi kunwari, dadala mo nga siya sa isang psychiatrist pero uh, binigyan siya ng medications pero kung hindi naman siya mag-follow up at hindi niya i-take yung gamot na ibigay sa kanya then probably it's not helpful or pag dala mo siya sa, sa psychologist tapos uh, ayaw naman niya magsalita then sayang lang rin so we always say that the best patient is the one who consents to the service no? and uh, yun nga, parang doon papasok siguro yung constant uh, reassurance sa kanila na okay, uh, hindi kita pipilitin pero if uh, you feel na ready ka na mag, ano, mag-reach out, then nandito lang ako to assist you. So, yun. Kailangan natin establish yung presence natin. And uh, uh, continuing uh, other, continuing uh, mag-map now, out ng mga concerns na pwede natin sa tulungan. Kasi yung pag, sabi ko nga kanina, di ba? Yung in terms of helping other people out, hindi lang naman emotional. Probably, uh, nandiyan na rin yung ano, practical ways of helping them. So, syempre, pag may mental concern ka, possible meron kang problems in terms of school. So probably if you help them sa school, then that's also already a form of support. So wag nating i-limit doon sa pag refer sa kanila sa mga professionals. Kasi marami talaga tayong pwedeng gawin na uh, sa atin lang at hindi kailangan ng ganong, kale- ganong kabigat na investment on the part of the patient. Okay, um, next question po. Um, Kuya Noah. Great morning po. So, I'm Renoa. And ang um, tanong ko po is, di ba, in comforting, I mean, in, in reaching out to our fellow youth po na meron ako mental health problem, ano po ba yung uh, proper words or encouragement po in consoling or comforting them, lalo na nga po ngayon na uso po yung toxic positivity or yung, po, yung mga words po na hindi naman po nakaka-comfort sa kami na. Um, wala rin ano eh. Well, hindi ko rin masabi kasi nagdidepende yan sa situation. And uh, I'd always really like to highlight na in terms of providing support to another person, mas importante yung konsepto ng pakikinig. And, and I've been uh, doing this a lot in the past few weeks na yung plainly pakikinggan mo lang sila na hindi ka nag-reply ka agad. That's already helpful. Kasi parang minsan parang ayaw natin tumulong kasi baka takot tayo na mali yung sabihin natin or Uh, hindi, hindi or triggering yung sabihin natin. So, yun yung mga ano, yun yung mga fears ng ilang mga advocates. That's why I always like to uh, share na mas i-highlight natin yung pakikinig na hindi tayo uh, na gano, nag-prepare na mag-reply. Kasi di ba sa mga movies, gano, di ba? Pag kunwari yung friend nila ay uh, nag-break tapos parang nag- nasa coffee shop sila. <laughs> tapos parang yung friend mo, yeah, dapat kasi hiwalayin mo na siya. Ang daming mga advice na binibigay. And uh, that's 
not actually helpful also because gusto natin uh, yung mga tao may pinagdadaanan ay sila dapat yung mag-decide for themselves ano yung uh, rest, uh, ano yung mga choices na ite-take nila kasi what if mali pala yung sabihin mo di ba and uh, syempre hindi rin naman ikaw yung tao na nandoon sa situation nila so you have to also understand na hindi ikaw yung best person to map out kung ano yung steps na gagawin ng ibang tao kasi hindi ikaw yung nandoon sa situation niya and uh, inaalis rin natin actually yung uh, risk of them being dependent sa atin kasi as much as possible yung mga tao may mental health condition gusto natin nung uh, meron silang self control kaya nila to manage yung sarili nilang emotions and if you keep on deciding for them then it's not actually helping them in the long term pero syempre meron talaga tayong mga no nos when it comes to saying uh, when it comes to talking to other people like for example you can't actually compare your struggles with them no uh, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na parang ay wala lang yan kasi wala pa yung pinagdaan ko before di ba hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na parang kaya mo yan kasi hindi mo naman alam kung ano yung ano kung ano yung pinagdadaan nila kasi sometimes yung kaya mo yan usually sa Filipino context parang ano siya di ba ang daling sabihin uh, and uh, usually positive yung pagtingin sa kanya pero first if you say kaya mo yan sa mga tao na merong depression for example na for the longest time tagal na nilang gumagawa ng paraan para maging okay sila probably it might create a sense of frustration on their end kasi sila sabi mo kaya mo yan pero alam nila sa sarili at at that point in time na hindi sila okay sila kaya so siguro ano siya parang we have to also make sure na hindi tayo nag overstep doon sa situation nila and at the same time um, valuing kung ano yung mga um, actions na gagawin nila we're just there as mental health advocates to support whatever decisions na gagawin nila and also help them reflect no um, ano kaya yung possible risk just in case na itake ko tong choice na ito at ano yung mga possible consequences that may arise out of it so yun yung gusto natin mangyari Ma- mapa-reflect lang sila at mapakinggan sila Thank you, Doc. Um, next question po natin from Ate Kim Kulep. Okay. Um, ito kasi, um, ito po kasi, Doc. Uh, itong problem or situation na to is napaka-common po sa mga ka-age, sa age group po namin, no, mga youth. So, ang tanong ko lang po kasi, um, as an individual or as ako or kami po, ano po yung maaari po naming magawang tulong or iba pa pong tulong sa iba pong mga ka-age po namin na nakaranas po ng matinding breakup during pandemic or this quarantine. Kasi sobrang trending po siya sa social media na ang dami pong na-quarantine fling. <laughs> or ang daming nag-breakup, ang daming nakapag-break ngayon na magkahiwalay sila as in like social distancing. Ganun po. Thank you po. <laughs> Ang hirap kasi hindi ko naaral yan sa, <laughs> sa med school. At uh, ayoko rin magbigay ng, ano, ng love advice. Pero um, siguro yung based from experience, <laughs> hindi natin dapat i-kahon ang sarili natin kung sino man yung um, kung sino man yung nag-ano sa atin, nagsistay sa atin. Kasi kung ano naman, kung yung relationship niyo ay healthy at uh, nakita niyo siya as a way of growing, no? probably it's it's worth staying in. Pero kung hindi naman siya nakakadagdag sa'yo as a person, then probably it's time to let go. No? At uh, yung ano naman, yung letting go sometimes is also a process so that you can actually put yourself back together again. <laughs> uh, hindi ako masyadong expert on, on love eh. Pero yun nga, parang ang hirap kasi magbigay ng sarili mo na hindi ka buo muna. And uh, since nasa age pa tayo, sinama ko talaga yung sarili ko, nasa age pa tayo na tinatry natin buoin yung identity natin, yung, uh, yung tinatry pa natin establish yung sarili natin professionally, um, nandun tayo sa stage na kinikilala pa lang natin yung sarili natin. And uh, we have to be open sa mga ganong types of uh, instances na might not always work for you. Pero definitely can be points of growth. Yon. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Then po. Um, ako po may question din po ako. Uh, kanina po kasi na banggit na yung sa kung wait lang po. All the notes ko. Kung depression, kung disorder na po ba siya or 
uh, normal reaction. Kapag na-distinguish na po ba na disorder or normal reaction siya, um, what's the best thing to do after po ma-distinguish na ano na siya? Um, ano kasi, yung sinair ko sa inyo kanina are just guides, no? So, hindi talaga siya way of determining kung uh, may formal diagnosis ka na or hindi. Kasi merong mas stringent na criteria uh, in terms of doing that. Pero yung gusto ko i-highlight is that in any stage of you uh, being in the spectrum, like dun sa wellness side ka ba or nasa illness side, kailangan natin ng emotional support. No? Kahit na yung mga day-to-day struggles natin, ay kailangan pa rin ma-address yan. Kasi syempre pag nagsabay-sabay yan, posible na dun, dun lumalabas yung mga triggers. So same lang on how you actually would manage yung mga tao na may um, maybe a diagnosable mental conditions. Allow them to express emotions nila. Allow them to identify yung emotions nila. Kasi I think yan yung isa sa mga challenges na kinakaharap ng mga kabataan ngayon. Eh. Parang hirap tayo mag-identify kung ano talaga yung emotions natin. Especially pag naging complex na yung mga emotions na nagsama na yung frustration and anger. Pag naiwan ka ng quarantine mo, di ba? Frustration and sadness. So probably if you separate kung ano yung mga feelings na ito, mas madali mo siyang ma-manage later on. And uh, lahat naman nagsisimula sa pag-acknowledge, di ba? Parang ano lang yan, pag move on, kailangan mo muna acknowledge na wala na kayo for you to actually move on later and heal. Thank you, Doc. Um, next question po from Jonas. Hello po. Um, good morning po. Morning. Um, sir, um, yung tanong ko po, ano, with regards to conversing with, ano, with other people. Um, especially po, ano, with older people. Um, yung tanong ko po, um, paano, ano, ano, po, um, with regards to their stand on certain issues na obviously fueled with um, misinformation. Um, paano po ba dapat makipag-converse sa kanila in a way na healthy po siya sa sarili ko? Um, like ano ba yan? Differences in in terms of opinion, gano'n ba siya? Apo. Ah, Kundi, kung nari po sabihin po natin, yung paniniwala po nila is obviously fueled with misinformation. Kung nari po, um, for instance, sabihin po natin, um, I'm conversing with my grandmother. Tapos yung grandmother ko po, yung paniniwala niya po kasi it's based on sabi-sabi and it's scientifically proven na hindi naman po totoo. Like, how do I, how do I properly converse with them uh, in a way na it does not hurt me mentally kasi i think it's mentally draining kung nagpe-present ka nagpe-present ng facts and parang yung ano parang how do we address conversing with older people uh, well siguro ano uh, sometimes it might be helpful if you put yourself on their shoe no? for example na doon ka doon sa older, since older people older person nga siya para possibly hindi ganoon kaganda yung um, access niya to these kinds of information. At syempre, alam naman natin, di ba, tayo, mas deaf tayo in terms of uh, literacy sa paggamit ng mga sources natin, o pagpitig sa kanila. Pero sila, wala silang gan... <laughs> Might already be an assumption, pero hindi ganun ka, ka well-discussed siguro on their part ng mga gano'n. So, syempre, kasama na dyan yung pagkikritik uh, ng mga sources we have. So, with that understanding, um, possibly, mas ano, mas... Uh, uh, mas ma-map out natin yung ways on how we can actually connect with them. Kasi uh, minsan yung mga differences in terms of opinion ay nangyayari pag, uh, kunwari, yung, yung, mga, yung mga issues na nag-arise due to a uh, difference of opinion, nangyayari siya pag wala tayong common ground na pinagsasabi. Mm. So, for example, uh, you can always disagree on certain things, but you can agree on certain facts. So, probably that can already be a start uh, doon sa pag-map out ano ba yung mga other issues that we can actually uh, kumbaga, explore later on. I know mahirap talaga siyang gawin kasi minsan sobrang resistant nila sa facts, di ba? Pero I, I think it's more of a challenge talaga sa generation natin na i-expand yung conversation na yun. And while doing so, uh, we have to paint ourselves na hindi masyadong uh, disagreeable on them. On, uh, with them, no? Kasi pag kunwari sa simula, parang uh, hindi medyo aggressive yung pag-attack natin sa opinion nila. Possibly that can build more walls rather than facilitating uh, a way of uh, bridging 
nagapit in them. So, always, uh, parang ako, lagi kong minimaintain na parang we can always disagree on certain things, but hindi tayo dapat maging disagreeable. Kasi the only way na maparating natin yung idea natin is to actually uh, build our case, um, position tayo, pero at the same time also guard, arm yourself with uh, different facts. Kasi yun naman talaga yung way of actually educating them later on. Pero syempre, it's a process. No? Uh, and sometimes you also need to help them understand yung relationships ng mga iba't ibang mga uh, issues. No? Kasi for example, ako, may, my parents, well, one of my parents actually is a very, uh, kumbaga, medyo blind siya with everything that's happening sa government. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, probably, <laughs> actually correlate yung mga nangyayari ngayon with the things that they experience on hand. Like, for example, nahirapan tayo ng, uh, magkaroon ng trabaho, for example, dahil yan sa hindi pag-ayos ng, ano, ng uh, government natin, which is the labor market, for example. So, yung mga ganun ba, na uh, kailangan i-link natin yung mga very uh, theoretical things to what they experience, that would actually help them. Saka okay, yung stories na sinabi natin, yung stories na hinahumanize natin yung mga issues, so probably that can also help. Okay po. Thank you po, thank you po. Thank you, Doc. Um, my question for the candidate. Candidate. Hello. Great morning. Hello. Great morning, po. Ako po si Candid. Since may mga kaibigan po kasi ako, one of their love language is physical touch. And since it's pandemic, ano po kaya yung effective, most effective way to help them? since hindi po natin sila nakakasama. Okay. Um, Yan may lang po. Tapos lang sa akin on my end. Pero parang you were asking about any ways to actually uh, maintain yung connection with them. Kasi nga, parang hindi na tayo physically maka-reach no, maka out to them. Right? Um, yun nga, parang I would uh, really highlight yung sinasabi ko kanina na maintaining yung mga informal, short but regular ng mga conversations with them. So, parang hindi naman siya laging all the time na parang dapat sabay kayo online. Probably, you just need to um, keep them updated kung ano yung nangyayari sa'yo, uh, ano yung mga things that you still enjoy uh, dito sa pandemic. Tapos yun nga, parang uh, mag-reply mag rin naman siguro sila once they have the time. So, I, I think it's just a matter of uh, really um, maximizing the spaces that we're in. But at the same time, recognize na hindi, hindi talaga pang, panghalili ang social media sa face-to-face -face interactions. Di ba, yung parang minsan pag nagkukwentuhan tayo, pag friends, di ba, minsan yung mga, may mga friends tayo, yung mga nanakit, yung mga, oh, is, dahil tawang-tawa sila, parang namamalo sila. So, yung mga ganun, parang nakakamiss <laughs> yung mga ganun. So, probably, kailangan natin talaga uh, uh, panghawakan yung mga ganun moments also. Uh, and, uh, i-assure din siguro sila na Later on, magkikita rin tayo. Babalik rin siguro tayo dun sa uh, normal. Um, I'm not sure how how soon that is. Pero mangyayari rin siguro siya later. Thank you, Doc. And yun po, for our last question po, ako sa akin po, mag-tatanong. Um, ngayon po na sobrang challenging po talaga ng panahon, ganyan, na we need to have a mental health awareness, ganyan po. Uh, Paano po maging mental health advocate? Uh, are there certain trainings po ba na kailangan ipag-undergo or learnings po na pagdaanan to become a mental health advocate? Uh, medyo mahina yung internet ko. Can you repeat the question? Sir? Uh, yun po. Uh, ngayon po kasi na sobrang challenging po tiba na ng panahon po ngayon ng crisis and in need po talaga ng mental health awareness. So, for us po, as youths po, na uh, gusto po maging mental health advocate, paano po kami magiging mental health advocate? Are there existing trainings po ba? Are there, uh, may kailangan po ba kami gawin to become a mental health advocate po? Um, sa tingin ko, wala naman talagang ano, wala naman talagang set training para maging ma 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 label ka as a mental health advocate. Kasi you can be an advocate 
in different uh, ways, no? So you can be an advocate by plainly practicing your mga self-care practices, by being uh, uh, a source of mental health just a community where you're in. Pero siyempre, meron pa rin mga ways of actively advocating for your time. For example, you can participate sa mga discussions. So, for example, sa Youth for Mental Health, uh, you can join us, by the way, no? uh, as an organization, uh, taga LNC, for example. Um, you can uh, join us and uh, participate sa mga discussions namin online. We uh, regularly host uh, yung mga internal discussions where we discuss in depth yung mga uh, issues on mental health, on uh, loneliness, on how to cope. Uh, meron rin kaming mga tinatawag na Zoom dates where uh, you can actually um, kumaga, uh, listen to the discussions live. No? So recently, meron kaming discussion on mental health and in the education system. So yung mga ganun ba na parang different topics uh, kinukopter rin namin sila i-cover para at least uh, maano natin, no? ma-address natin yung not only mental health but mental health related issues. Kasi yung mental health hindi natin siya pwedeng i-separate sa mga iba't ibang mga issue na kinakaharap natin. And every um, issue naman ay dapat binibigyan ng uh, mental health perspectives. So kahit anong field ka, pwede mong pag-usapan yung, yung mental health. So, you can always join yung mga discussions natin online. And um, it might be good. Maraming mga readings kasi right now. Uh, especially uh, from the World Health Organization. I can also send you some links kung gusto ko kung interested pa kayo magbasa more about uh, mental health. Para at least, uh, on your own pace, you can also listen. Pero yun nga, parang I think the larger part, of, or actually the harder part of the advocacy is to actually be there for a person pag meron na silang pinagdadaan. I think that's the real best talaga. And uh, dun talaga masusubok yung skills mo as an advocate and uh, the result to actually help other people out. So, for now, I would really uh, emphasize on the uh, importance of you building that sense of empathy to other people by listening to them. And you can practice that sa mga circles niyo. No? You can always listen sa mga problems sila. Pero at the same time, alagaan na rin natin yung sarili natin. Kasi sabi nga nila, di ba, you can't give what you do not have. So, parehas lang yan. Thank you. Thank you for Dr. RJ. Sobrang salamat for the talk po and for answering our questions po. And for this time, Doc, baka po may gift po kayo if you know more. Uh, siguro, yung ano na lang, sa Youth for Mental Health Coalition Facebook page, you can like our page so that you can also see the different activities that we're um, doing. So, nandiyan naman yung Zoom dates that we uh, do regularly, usually 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, nagpo-post naman kami ng schedule noon. And then you can also listen sa, ano na, ayan, galing ah. <laughs> ayan. You can also listen to our, ano, um, to our, uh, you can also join yung support group sessions namin that we uh, do, especially sa mga young people na may, uh, actually, kahit wala kang mental health problem, you can join the support group para alam nyo rin the different ways on how to cope. And uh, we're still trying to uh, accept donations para sa, patients and uh, frontliners ng National Center for Mental Health. So, if you would scroll down yan, uh, nagdo-donate kami ng mga uh, N95 at saka mga other supplies for the benefit of frontliners and uh, yung mga patients po natin. Yun. So, yun lang po so far yung mga activities. Thank you po, Dr. RJ. And so, pang salamat po. It's an honor po for us. We're in LNC to have you as our speaker. Maraming maraming salamat po.